The year is 2007, January 1st. The internet is buzzing with news, entertainment, and social media. Europe is also facing some of the worst weather it's had in a long time, resulting in many harmed and injured, which has received mass reporting, resulting in an online frenzy of emails, shares, and downloads. But in reality, the weather in Europe is fine, nobody is hurt, and nothing actually happened? This is Henry. He's a journalist working for a reputable online magazine. He's always looking for the latest scoop, so when he receives an email from an unknown sender with a catchy subject line, he doesn't hesitate to open it. 230 dead as a storm batters Europe. Henry clicks on the attachment, expecting to see a video of a storm that battered Europe, but instead, nothing happens. Or so he thinks. A meeting is being held at F-Secure, a Finnish security company. It has taken note of a new type of malware that can constantly change its code. It is believed to originate from Russia or Eastern Europe. Two employees, Adam Bertan and Noam Patel, are sent to investigate. They start by collecting samples of the malware from the infected computers. They use a sandbox environment to isolate and run the malware safely. They notice that it uses different techniques to evade detection and removal, such as encryption, polymorphism, rootkits, peer-to-peer -peer networks, and counterattacks. They try to reverse engineer the code of the malware to understand its logic and structure. They find out it's written in assembly language, which makes it even harder to read and modify. They also find out it has multiple layers of functionality, such as downloading additional components, sending spam emails, launching denial of service attacks, and stealing information. They decide to report their findings to their boss and ask for more resources and support. They have already failed. The virus spreads mainly through email, enticing people with news or imitating the identity of someone they think they know. The virus upon being downloaded won't show any signs of its presence Operating secretly in a large botnet, the infected computers are coined as zombies. A botnet has many uses. It can be used for information theft, hosting illegal content, and even mining cryptocurrencies. The larger the better, and Stormworm by now had already affected millions of computers. This leaves one question. Who was behind all this? Employees at F-Secure worked diligently in order to find out who or what group was behind the spreading of the virus. This was done by... The following information has been confiscated by Unit SC-997. Further malcompliance is illegal. Thank you for your participation. They share their findings with the FSB security forces, who are then tasked with leading a joint operation with Interpol, the International Policing Agency, in order to arrest and seize the assets of those responsible for the worm. They find the culprit to be of Russian origin as suspected from early on in the investigation. The group of hackers belong to a group called the Zahatan Gang, with conflicting origins and not much information. Their upbringing, however, is not important to this story. What is important, though, is that their current operation was being held in Russia. The group hosted servers not far from Moscow, which sent out the virus. A raid is conducted, 13 suspects are arrested, and the public receives little to no new information in the following years. What Stormworm did was pretty impressive. The Stormworm was a polymorphic virus, meaning it could change its code and major aspects of itself to avoid detection. By early 2008, Microsoft releases an update that will protect Windows systems from the virus, and Stormworm shortly fades after. <laughs> 